Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name's Megan and I post weekly videos with travel tips and hacks, so if you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. Now I love Da Nang and 99.999% of my experiences there have been very positive. However, I have of course experienced several scams. In today's video, I'll be sharing 10 scams that have personally happened to myself or to a friend in Da Nang or Hoi An, Vietnam. The first one on the list is the fake menu scam. Now, this one is simple. Once you've finished your meal, you'll receive a bill with prices that are higher than what you were expecting to pay. In order to confirm the price, you'll ask the server to go back and get the menu so you can show them that it's supposed to be a lesser amount. But what they'll do is they'll bring you a menu with inflated prices, a different menu from the original one that you ordered from. This is a tough scam to get out of if you don't have proof of the original menu price. I was so confident that this happened to me while I was in Hoi An, but I ended up second guessing myself in the moment and paying the higher price. It wasn't until later when I spoke with friends that had also eaten at the same restaurant and also had the same experience where they felt like they were paying more when the bill came than what they were expecting to pay. Try looking for restaurants that have the stacks of menu at the front of the restaurant so you have something to refer back to or the ones that have the menu with the prices listed on the wall. If you go somewhere that doesn't have these, consider taking a picture of the menu that you order from as well as verbally confirming the price while ordering. The second scam to look out for in Da Nang, Vietnam is the fake note scam. This is when you pay for something and then the seller tells you that the bill you paid with is counterfeit. When a friend of mine was renting his apartment for five months in Da Nang, he went to pay his deposit in cash. Now this is a lot of money as the deposit is often equal to one full month of rent. So it's several hundred US dollars at a minimum. The landlord took his deposit, gave it a funny look, and then left the room. He came back a minute or two later and let my friend know that the money he was paying with was counterfeit. He did it in a very friendly way and said, this happens so often with tourists when they come in, they go to the ATM, they use fake ATMs, and they end up being given fake notes. It was later discovered that the landlord had actually swapped my friend's bills for counterfeit money when he had left the room earlier. This is a very difficult scam to get out of once you have taken your eyes off your money. And even if you're not renting an apartment, keep this in mind if you're paying for anything with a large bill at a market or at a store. Do not let the shop owner take your bills into another room or even put it out of sight behind the counter. Keep an eye on your money. I've gotten quite a few messages about travelers going to Da Nang and planning to rent long term that are concerned about not getting their deposits back at the end of their stay. This is scam number three and it is very common. At the end of my stay, my first time in Vietnam, I had my deposit questioned. The landlord came in to do the inspection when I was leaving and noticed that the wall was heavily cracked, damaged and stained behind one of the paintings. The landlord then claimed that I had done the damage while I was staying there and was refusing to give me back my deposit. I had photos on my phone from when I initially moved in that included photos of behind the fridge, underneath the carpet, and behind any of the paintings on the wall to prove that the damage was already there prior to my moving in. There were no further questions asked and I got my deposit back. Because of this experience, I'm extra cautious whenever I move into somewhere new. Not only will I take all these photos, but I'll also email them on the same day that I move in to my landlord. This shows that I'm aware of any damage that is there, I'm taking the precautions, and it also gives a date proving when these photos were taken. If you are renting an apartment and having to put a lot of money up front, I'd recommend that you try working with a landlord that will accept a bank transfer instead. I personally will use TransferWise because it gives you the lowest rates when you're converting currency, at least from any of the tools I've found. I'll leave the link for it below. By doing a bank transfer, instead of handing over cash, there's also a paper trail that the money has been paid. Not all landlords will accept online transfers, so another option is to rent through a service like Airbnb long term. Yes, it is going to be more expensive than if you negotiate the price in person, but all of your payment will be done online and you can also refer to other reviews from people that have stayed there in the past to see if there's anything you should be looking out for. If you're traveling to Vietnam, you may be considering renting a motorbike while you're there. This is very common and many foreigners do it. While the cost to rent is low, the cost for any damage or loss of the bike is very, very high. And they will often ask to hold your passport while you rent the bike as a security deposit so that you'll pay if you do damage or lose the bike. 
A common scam is to be charged for existing damage on the bike when you go to return it. Avoid this by thoroughly inspecting the bike, including the underside, with the seller present prior to making any payments. Sometimes scratches are covered with paint and then they wash off as you drive through puddles or if it rains. If there could be existing damage you don't initially see up front. Definitely thoroughly inspect that bike and then take pictures if there are any areas of damage to note. There are so many motorbike rental shops in Da Nang, you will see them on every corner, so I recommend that you do a quick search on TripAdvisor first and make sure that you're going to a shop that is going to be legitimate, that has been highly reviewed by other travelers. Additional signs the renter is legitimate are things like if they ask you to see a local or international driver's license, as well as if they provide you with a helmet. An extreme but not unheard of case actually happened to my friend when he rented a bike in Da Nang for a full week. He parked the bike overnight outside of his apartment, woke up the next morning, and found the bike was missing. Absolutely freaked out, he went back to the guy that he rented it from, who was demanding that he pay the full cost of the bike in order to have his passport returned. My friend was smart enough to contact the police, and it turned out that this renter had a history of renting the bikes out, which then mysteriously go missing, and he had been charged in the past for actually using a spare key taking the bike and stealing it back. This was discovered and my friend did not have to pay the price of the bike and he also got his passport back. The next one is less of a scam, but more of something that you just need to be hyper aware of when you're walking around on the streets of Da Nang. Essentially, a thief on a motorbike will zip past you and grab any loose valuables. My downstairs neighbor in Da Nang had his phone taken right out of his hand by a scooter driving by. While you may walk around in your home city with your phone out texting, it's definitely not something that you should be doing in Da Nang. Extra precautions you can take include investing in an anti-theft backpack or what I personally use, which is a flip belt that goes against your waist like a running belt and keeps all of your valuables out of sight and also deters pickpocketers because it's kind of hard to get at. This is a much better option than having a purse on your shoulder that can be easily grabbed by someone driving by on a motorbike or even a purse that goes across your body because the strap can be easily cut. It's also very dangerous how close these drivers will get to you and at such high speeds when they're trying to steal from you. So definitely try to keep things tucked away so there's no temptation. Taxis with rigged meters are also common and they look deceivingly legitimate in Da Nang. This is when the meter price is going to be heavily inflated to what you should actually be paying. Tourists that have just arrived at the Da Nang airport are often targeted because if you've just arrived, it's safe to assume that you don't know what the price is that you should be paying to get to your destination. A simple solution to avoid this scam is to use the ride-sharing app Grab, which is just like Uber or Lyft in other countries. By using Grab's ride-sharing app, you're paying through the app and you know what the exact fare is going to be up front. This also stops you from having to pull out any money while you're on your ride and you're able to see the route that you're taking. A side note to this one is that once you order your grab, make sure that you hang on to all of your luggage as you go to get into the grab. If there's anyone there that helps you put your luggage into the car, whether you ask for it or not, they will be expecting you to tip them. Another scenario where you'll be expected to tip or to buy something is if a Vietnamese man or woman that's traditionally dressed, often with a bamboo stick or a bunch of fruit, comes up to you and tries to dress you and then prompts you to take a photo with your phone. It's all fun and games, but then once the photo has been taken, they will be requesting a tip for the photo or again, trying to sell you their fruit. It can get quite aggressive and the seller will probably follow you around until you agree to pay them. I mentioned earlier that you need to keep your eye on your money, particularly when you're paying with larger bills. Well, even if you're paying with smaller bills, you definitely want to keep your eyes on the money. Vietnamese dong all looks very similar in regards to shape, size, and color. It wouldn't be hard to mix up 10,000 dong with 100,000 dong. You need to be careful of paying for something and then having the seller very quickly, very stealthy, it's like magic, swapping it and then letting you know that you had paid incorrectly. This happened to me at my favorite market in Da Nang, which is Back My Ann. Definitely check it out if you're in the city. I was at one of the stands and I am so confident that I gave the seller a note that was equivalent to 100,000 dong. She then laughed, smiled, and held up 10,000 dong, which was the note that I gave her. 
She was smiling and laughing and saying tourists always mess these up because they look so similar. I ended up paying her another 100,000 Vietnamese dong and I'm so sure that this bill was swapped. My next suggestion is to always, always, always count the change that you receive to avoid the incorrect change scam. In the tourist spots around Da Nang, and then absolutely in Hoi An, I would say that I was given incorrect change three out of four times that I was buying something. It's assumed that number one, you won't be counting your change, and that number two, even if you were counting your change, you don't know what the value is, so you wouldn't be able to know if it was the correct change or not. This is also a super easy one for the seller to get out of because if you did count the change and you call them out on it being incorrect, they can just apologize and give you the correct amount with no harm, no foul. Always count your change and always know what the money is worth. I always have trouble with dong because you end up paying in thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands when in the reality, ten thousand Vietnamese dong is less than fifty cents American. My last tip is to be extra aware and really inspect that item that you're buying. Vietnam is notorious for knockoffs. And now I love a good knockoff. If it's gonna look the same and it's gonna function the same at a heavily discounted price, I'm all for it. However, the knockoffs I'm finding in Vietnam tend to be very poor quality. My carry-on suitcase fell apart when I was in Vietnam after years of wear and tear, and I needed to buy a new carry-on to get myself and all my stuff home to Canada. I went to the market, I paid for a suitcase, and first the zipper went, then the wheel fell off, then the side cracked, then the other wheel. Needless to say, it was a very stressful trip home trying to keep that suitcase together to get it from Da Nang to Canada without losing all of my belongings. Those are the 10 scams that I personally experienced or had a friend experience while living or traveling through Da Nang, Vietnam. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It's a free and easy way to support the channel and I'd really appreciate it. Also, I hope you'll subscribe and you'll join me again back here for another travel video next week. Until then, all the best and happy travels. Bye.